Hello and welcome. Today we will try to give uh, the term minimal server a new meaning uh, using the old popular ASP8266 module. We will set up one of these modules in order to host an entire website with uh, PHP and JavaScript support. Everything will run on the onboard storage, so no external links will be required. But first a little bit of history. This module came out in 2014 in uh, this version, the 01 version, which was very limited with uh, 512 uh, kilobytes of memory and uh, only one GPIO port as output. Later arrived uh, more sophisticated boards like the very famous 12F with 8 GPIO output and uh, an analog to digital converter port, which is very, very important. Anyway, today we will use a 01 version, but with one megabyte of inboard storage. You can realize uh, all kinds of crazy things with these boards, mainly Internet of Things, toggle lights, switches from a web page. But today we will try to abuse one of these in order to become a standalone web server. All right, here we have the schematics. On the left side, we have the voltage regulator part. I used the very common LD1117, which can transform up to 15 volts in 3.3 volts. It needs two capacitors. On the main line, we need a 100 nanofarad capacitor, while on the output side, we need a 10 microfarad capacitor. So this rail will be at 3.3 volts. The ESP8266 has the following pinout. We have ground, which goes to ground, GPIO2, which goes to high, GPIO0, which can go both to high or to ground. To ground when we need the module to be in flash mode and to VCC during normal operation. Then we have the RX line, which goes to the TX line of the bridge. The, T, the TX line, which goes to the RX of the bridge. Then we have the chip power down, also called uh, enable sometime, which goes to VCC. Then we have the reset button, which goes, which goes uh, to ground through a momentary button. And then we have VCC, which goes to VCC. Also, the ground of the bridge has to go to the same ground of the board. This is very important. So you can follow this simple, this simple schematics for having a working ESP8266, which can be toggled between flash mode and the regular operation mode. For the enclosure I used my trusty Anet A8 3D printer, which is a Prusa Mark I knockoff. I designed a simple box about 7 by 7 by 4 cm in order to accommodate the few components, with the exception of the transformer. For the transformer I used a wall-mounted phone charger and ancient Sony Ericsson 1 for providing the 5V line. I then designed the holes for securing the verboard, the switch and the momentary micro. The walls are 3mm thick and I printed using a PLA filament. If you use a proper components such as a micro switch and a breadboard friendly momentary button, you will save up quite a lot of space, but you work with what you have at hand. For the lid, I, I went uh, with a very simple design with uh, four holes in order for the 3mm uh, screws to keep everything together. Quite uh, a no nonsense uh, but rather boring design. You can develop it as much as you wish. If you don't have a 3D printer handy, well, you should buy one because they are amazing and uh, nowadays uh, quite cheap. But otherwise, uh, you could use, uh, for example, a 3mm uh, MDF but you should uh, avoid uh, metal because uh, metal will shield uh, the board and make it hard for it uh, to connect uh, with your uh, wireless network. Anyway, these uh, two simple prints will take about uh, 6 hours at a speed of uh, 60mm per second. Once uh, we've printed uh, everything, we just need to assemble it. We will use uh, 3mm screws in order to hold in place the micro switch and the vero board. As you can clearly see I have uh, messed up the, the dimension of the vero board. So it fits just barely, so let it be a lesson to you. Always double check your measurements. Anyway, one way or another, 
it fits all quite snugly. Now the lid can be quite inconvenient because uh, every time we will need to upload new web pages we will need to remove it. So you can uh, work on uh, some uh, more clever design for opening and uh, closing the lid. Alright, so we hop into the Arduino IDE and we are going to flash uh, both the firmware and uh, all the data files uh, needed for the website to run. Firstly, we are going to upload the data folder. So, I go into the sketch folder, control key, and here I have uh, all of my files uh, which I want to upload. They have to be all inside this folder and this is uh, the sketch we are going to use. We put the board into flash mode we put uh, GPIO0 to ground we power up the board now I'm gonna use the, this bridge in order to connect the board to my computer I have just to plug in into the correct pin and connect it via USB Alright, now if I go to tools I have to make sure I am on the right port, COM6, yes, and now if I press tools, sketch data upload, here I can see I've seen the port and I am uploading all of the files in the data folder spiff image uploaded now i'm gonna to upload the firmware first thing i do a reset as you can see when i reset the blue led blinks i found a great uh, tutorial on uh, the esp8266 with the arduino ide which you can find in the video description and uh, I've used and I've used almost entirely an example from uh, that guide a few notable things here we create the web server object usually is the door 80 I have to use uh, the door 8080 because uh, otherwise uh, my router wouldn't let me set the port forwarding rule here here I have my SSID and my password we have to change those obviously while these lines are very important because they allow me to set the static IP address this is very important in order to access the website from the outside world and I have also to specify the gateway and the subnet it's a little bit odd because first I begin the connection and then I set the static IP address but it is the way it is the loop as you can see is just a server.handle client which uh, take the HTTP request and search in the spiff memory if it can find a file with that, na with that name. I upload the sketch, as you can see the lights are blinking and I am uploading the firmware. Now, if I open the serial monitor and I erase the system, I get a lot of garbage because I am still into flash mode. Now, I switch, switch, switch on the back here into normal operation and I erase it. Now, I'm connected to my network with my static IP address. Now, if I open a web page, and I go to the IP address nothing happened because I am not on the door 80 which is the standard for the HTTP I have to ask for the door 8080 because it's the one I have configured here I go, I go into the index of my website, I could have asked 
for uh, the IP colon the door 8080 slash index dot, dot html and here I can see the request for the index html the two images uh, that uh, we can see and uh, the icon up here and uh, style.css which can uh, be used to style uh, the website I can move into this website for instance uh, I can click here and here I've requested the contacts.html page I go here I've requested the cat.html page and so on and so forth as you can see it is pretty responsive if you think about the limitation of the hardware but I'm just asking for different pages so there you have it a complete standalone web server I've used a transformer in order to power everything up it consumes about 50 milliamps of current so you could run it uh, on battery for a long long time and make it portable a portable website anyway in order to access it from the outside world you will need to open the door on your uh, router I've set up the door 8080 so I will need a port forwarding rule which can forward all uh, the requests on, on that port on the static IP address on this device. Once I've done that, from everywhere in the world, I could type my public IP address, colon the port 8080, and boom, I will be inside of this. You could buy a domain and link the domain to your uh, public IP address, and having a standard website, .org.com, whatever you wish, access from all over the world. I've done just that. If you go to this uh, website, you can uh, access from uh, all over the world my little ESP8266. Hope you enjoyed this project, which is just one of many that you can do with uh, one of those, uh, frankly, amazing boards. Have fun with the ESP8266 and see you next time, DFTBA.